Could you tell us um, why exactly PPC appointed Betson Lab and um, what were some of the key findings of the results? Well, as a market leader, we do benchmark with our competitors and this started with us benchmarking with our competitors. But then as we get the results from our own lab, we realized that there is actually quite a lot of uh, results that were really shocking. Uh, to say the least, and we decided now we're going to do a very detailed survey of that. And uh, just for independence, we actually contracted uh, uh, Betun Lab, and uh, we didn't want to put our hands on the bag to make it independent. And uh, they carried on with the tests for the last uh, two years, and uh, basically, in fact, the results showed a deterioration as the times become tougher and tougher, which shows you that um, actually some of the products that are coming into the market, they're starting to take a lot of shortcuts in producing these products. And, and hence we, at some stage, decided to go to the authorities. We went to uh, SABS and NRCS. Um, we wrote them letters with the evidence in terms of the results. And we had a meeting with SABS explaining that we can't keep quiet with these results and we expect them to do something about it. And when they didn't come back to us, we basically uh, carried on prompting. Um, and eventually we started seeing in the market that they are trying their best to do something about it. But they are not resourced enough to be able to police the kinds of products that are going out there. Um, actually, in mentioning the, the authorities, what is the, the way forward? I mean, um, obviously you'll be giving the, the results, or you have given the results to the authorities. What's, what's going to happen? I think um, we need to be mindful, and the reason why PPC decided to do this is because we are a responsible citizen, and we couldn't keep quiet with some of those uh, results and what we've seen. And what we expect is public needs to be educated. Um, all those people that are building their houses, um, they are building them for their children and their children's children, and they want durability. With the tough times that we see out there, people want something affordable. But affordable does not mean poor quality. They just want something that will be able to afford and be able to build their houses. So. Um, the way forward with the, in our view, is to educate the public that uh, cement is not just cement. It, it is a binder that actually comes in between the two bricks and forms this structure that you've made. And um, unfortunately for the poorest of the poor, unlike a big construction company, they do test their product, they do test the concrete after they've laid the concrete. But, uh, um, ordinary men in the street, they assume that the product conforms, especially when it carries the SABS mark, they assume that it conforms to the quality, which is not actually the case. So most of the work that we need to do in the background is to educate people that um, chip is not really quality. Is there any other way that consumers are able to identify substandard products? Well, um, other than doing the actual testing, uh, that's, that's one way. And also the pricing. I mean, if the, the product is at 32.5, it means it needs to get to a 32.5 uh, uh, megapascals in 28 days. Unfortunately, an ordinary man cannot go and test it. But um, when you look at the pricing, when you get a quality product, like a PPC product that you know it always existed and it's seven rands more expensive than another product in the market, then you have to be very suspicious of the, of the, of the product. And, and the simplest thing is stick to the products that you know. Um, it, it is very important. And um, could you maybe just talk to us a little bit um, about the threat that these substandard products actually poses to both the industry um, well, and the consumer? Well, um, I, I think the biggest threat about it is with the tough economic times, these are no longer limited to 
an ordinary man on the street that is trying to put up a back room. We find this product going into medium construction companies, starting to use that as an alternative. And what is said is, if you look at um, a massive uh, double-story house, cement content is actually 3% of the cost. And in an RDP house, it might go up to about 8% of the cost. And when we uh, speak to the uh, uh, professionals in construction, they will tell you that our input materials like your stone, your sand, has actually deteriorated in quality because of the, especially in the Gauteng area. So you've got deteriorated other mean, uh, materials and your binder is just as worse, um, then you have a disaster. And the one thing about cement is if you put it together, it will set. It will look like the structure is standing. But give it a few times, few rains, winds, and, and this very unpredictable uh, climate, you will find that the quality will deteriorate and then we might have some disasters. And we've seen in a couple of years, we've had a disaster in Soweto where the houses were washed away with the first rain. And it was mostly RDP houses that are meant for the poorest of the poor and actually those kind of disasters. What more is, if you go into some of the township or rural areas, you will find that people are building massive structures, double-story houses, and they are actually going for this product because it looks like it is affordable. Unfortunately, we're going to suffer the consequences of it in the next few years.